Spider-Man 3 is a 2007 action-adventure video game loosely based on the Spider-Man 3 film and released for Game Boy Advance, Microsoft Windows, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 2 Wii, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 on May 4, 2007. A PlayStation Portable version was released on October 17, 2007. The GameCube and Xbox versions of the game were planned for release, but both were cancelled due to low sales for Xbox and limited resources for GameCube along with Shrek the Third and The Simpsons game. The game's plot expands on the film by including additional characters and elements from the Spider-Man comic books and the Marvel Universe. Depending on the platform, different villains from the comics are featured, but all versions of the game feature the film's three main antagonists, New Goblin, Sandman and Venom. Tobey Maguire, James Franco, Topher Grace, Thomas Hayden Church, and J.K. Simmons reprise their roles from the film. Kirsten Dunst, who portrayed Mary Jane Watson in the film, is replaced by Carrie Walgren, and for some reason, a few characters from the film are missing, and those are Aunt May, Gwen and Captain George Stacy. Topic. Plot Topic. Microsoft Windows, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 About a year after the events of the previous game, a new gang called the H-Bombers blow up the Carlisle building, and Spider-Man drives them away. The next day, Peter Parker narrates. Just another day in the life of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Lately, things have been going my way. I got the girl, and New York finally likes me. Not that there aren't problems, there is this new guy Eddie Brock at the Daily Bugle, and he is really starting to get on my nerves. Harry, my best friend, won't talk to me. On top of that, new gangs have been dividing up the city. Still, it's nothing I can't handle. One weird thing, there hasn't been any big supervillains around since Doc Ock. I have this bad feeling that the sky is gonna fall or something, and soon. While receiving several assignments at the Bugle from his boss, J. Jonah Jameson, such as having to photograph some lizard people spotted across the city, Spider-Man also deals with three new gangs terrorizing the city, the Apocalypse, the Arsenic Candy, and the Dragon Tail. However, he makes short work of the apocalypse, foiling their attacks on the subway and the power plant and even defeating their leader, while also stopping some arsenic candies, who attacked a theater, a factory, and a warehouse full of fireworks and hostages, and some dragon tails, who tried to hijack a van full of ancient Chinese statues. Spider-Man must also deal with the H-Bombers, who return with a threat of blowing up the subway, but Spidey is able to foil their plan just in time. After a long day of fighting crime, Spider-Man takes Mary Jane Watson, his girlfriend, on a thrill ride, stopping in Central Park for a talk. As they talk, an alien symbiote inside a meteor crashes nearby and attaches to Peter's shoe, while Harry goes inside his father's secret goblin lair, where he dons a goblin armor and enters a chamber filled with the goblin formula gas, thus becoming the new goblin. In the meanwhile, Peter's college science teacher Dr. Kurt Connors injects himself with a lizard DNA serum, in the hope of regrowing his missing right arm, but it instead transforms him into a giant lizard. While investigating Connors' lab, Peter finds out what happened and is then attacked by Connors, who runs away into the sewers. Spider-Man chases him and discovers that Connors has already changed numerous other people into lizards. After fighting his way through the lizard people, Spider-Man eventually confronts and defeats Connors, but he escapes again. Back at the college, Peter changes into his regular clothes and is suddenly attacked by Harry, New Goblin, who wants to avenge his father's death. They battle across the city until Peter eventually knocks Harry unconscious and brings him to a hospital. Meanwhile, an escaped convict named Flint Marco tries to escape from police and falls into a cockpit full of sand, where scientists are doing experiments on sand, one of which fuses Flint with the sand, thus becoming Sandman. The following day, Spider-Man foils the H-Bomber's plans once again. After these failures, the H-Bombers decide to attack the Daily Bugle and kidnap J. Jonah Jameson, although Spidey defeats the bombers and disarms their bombs, while also discovering that Luke Carlyle, one of the richest businessmen in New York, is the leader of the H-Bombers. Spider-Man eventually saves Jameson and destroys the H-Bombers' helicopter, thus foiling their plans for the last time, although Carlyle manages to escape. 
At the same time, Spider-Man begins working with Detective Jean DeWolf, who enlists his help in cracking down on some gun runners and crooked cops, in exchange for information on the Mad Bomber case, which she's also investigating. Spidey takes pictures of some dirty deals for DeWolf and even saves her from some crooked cops who set her up, with the two of them eventually becoming friends, although DeWolf denies it. Spider-Man later finds out about a science corporation called Mechabiacon, where an evil scientist named Dr. Stilwell captured and made experiments on Scorpion, Mac Gargan, leaving him with a mechanical scorpion tail he can't get rid of, and whom Spidey previously encountered in a subway station three years ago, before he escaped. Spider-Man infiltrates MBC's island headquarters and, after fighting his way through the security guards and robots, encounters a scientist named Dr. Andrews, who really cares about Gargan and tells Spidey where he's being held. Spider-Man infiltrates the base and is forced to fight a mind-controlled Gargan before chasing him around the city, until eventually destroying the mind-controlling device. Gargan thanks Spider-Man for his help and starts planning his revenge on MBC, while Spidey returns home. After Peter falls asleep, the symbiote from earlier approaches him and envelops his body, leading to a brand new jet black Spider-Man suit. This new symbiote suit makes him much stronger and more agile, but also more aggressive. Peter pursues Sandman, who has just robbed a bank, into the subway and manages to defeat him before washing him away in a sewer pipe, seemingly killing him. The following day, at the Bugle, Peter and Eddie Brock are both given the same assignment, catch Spider-Man robbing something, and the one who does it first gets a promotion. Brock attempts to cheat by paying someone to pose as Spider-Man, but the real Spidey appears and, influenced by the black suit, breaks Brock's camera and assaults him. Brock reveals that he has more cameras around that automatically photographed the attack, but he destroys all of them and leaves, while Brock swears revenge. Spider-Man returns to the sewers in his search for Connors and encounters Craven the Hunter, who already caught Connors and plans to kill him, as he would make a good trophy. Spider-Man fights and soon defeats Craven, but he manages to escape, so Spidey continues the search for Connors, eventually finding him transformed into a giant monster, as a result of one of Craven's magic spells. Spider-Man defeats the monster and turns it back into Dr. Connors, whom he then brings to a hospital. However, he does this in such a violent way that he becomes concerned about the black suit. A little while later, Spider-Man foils the plans of both the arsenic candies, who tried to steal some jewelry from a museum and later to force an innocent man to marry their leader, and the Dragon Tails, who stole numerous ancient Chinese statues secretly made of jade and gold and planned to sell them for millions, while also defeating their respective leaders. Returning to the Daily Bugle, Peter receives a new assignment, take photos of the police's speech at the courthouse about the recently won gang war and the gang's respective apprehended leaders. Peter does so, but things don't go so well when Kingpin interrupts the speech and frees the three gang leaders, before running away with them in the resulted chaos. Spider-Man goes to confront Kingpin at his lair, where he defeats the gang leaders again, and then Kingpin as well. However, the black suit causes him to throw Kingpin out a window, seemingly killing him. This makes Spider-Man realize that the black suit is a negative influence on his behavior. After a horrible date with Mary Jane, where the black suit causes him to become verbally abusive, Mary Jane decides to call off the relationship, which saddens Peter. Spider-Man decides to get rid of the symbiote right now and goes to a nearby church, where he attempts to remove the suit inside the bell tower. Thanks to the vibrations produced by the bell, Peter successfully removes the symbiote and its bond with him, but unbeknownst to him, Brock followed him here and watched Peter unmask himself. While Spider-Man leaves, the symbiote attaches to Brock instead, thus becoming Venom. Finally back to his senses, Spider-Man visits Connors at the hospital, who asks him to help him fix his mistakes by turning all the lizard people back to normal. Spider-Man returns to Connor's sewer lab to recover some ingredients, which Connors uses to create an antidote for the lizards. Spidey then takes this antidote to the sewers and places it in some canisters placed there earlier by Connors during his time as a lizard, which release the antidote in the air and returns all the lizard people to normal. Spider-Man visits Connors and reassures him that he is a good man before leaving. Spider-Man later visits Mac Gargan as well and helps him infiltrate the MBC headquarters to exact his revenge. The two work together to defeat Rhino, whom Scorpion released earlier from a police van while under mind control, and confront Dr. Stilwell, who took Dr. Andrews hostage. Scorpion prepares to kill Stilwell for all the pain he caused to him, but Andrews helps him understand that this will not solve anything. 
Gargan realizes that he will never be normal again and departs, while Spider-Man leaves Stillwell for the police. Meanwhile, Venom finds a still-alive Sandman and blackmails him into working together to kill Spider-Man, otherwise, he will kill his daughter Penny. Without any other choice, Sandman agrees, and the two kidnap Mary Jane in order to lure Spider-Man to them at a construction site. While Spider-Man struggles against two formidable supervillains, Harry, having recovered from his injuries, decides to help his old friend and arrives at the construction site as well. Mary Jane eventually falls out of the cab, but Harry takes her to safety, before engaging Sandman in a fight, while Spider-Man continues his battle with Venom. Harry defeats Sandman and tries to help Spider-Man, but Venom seemingly kills him. Spider-Man weakens Venom with sonic vibrations, but Venom tackles him off the building. Spider-Man survives while Venom is fatally impaled on steel bars. Peter mends his relationship with Mary Jane while Sandman, still alive, is reunited with Penny, who has been rescued by police. He thanks and apologizes to Spidey, before peacefully leaving with Penny. The next day, Spider-Man resumes his never-ending battle against crime. Topic: <laughs> PlayStation 2, Wii and PlayStation Portable. After stopping a new gang called the H-Bombers from blowing up the Carlisle building, Peter Parker narrates, "...just another day in the life of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Lately, things have been going my way. I got the girl and New York finally likes me. Not that there are problems, but there is this new guy Eddie Brock at the Daily Bugle, and he is really starting to get on my nerves. Harry, my best friend, won't talk to me. On top of that, new gangs have been dividing up the city." Still, it's nothing I can't handle. One weird thing is that there hasn't been any big super villain around since Doc Ock. I have this bad feeling that the sky is gonna fall or something and soon. Spider-Man tries balancing his superhero life with his regular life, which consists of his friends, family and job as a photographer at the Daily Bugle. While talking with his boss, J. Jonah Jameson, about Spider-Man's role as the protector of New York City, they receive a phone call from the Mad Bomber, the leader of the H-Bombers, who threatens to blow up the Bugle's printing plant. Peter leaves in a rush and, after suiting up as Spider-Man, defeats the Bombers and disarms their bombs. After being informed by police that the H-Bombers have planted bombs all over Bugle's regional office as well, Spider-Man goes there and foils the Bombers' plan once again. Before leaving however, he picks up a tracking device that shows several bombers heading way this, so Spider-Man confronts and defeats them before they can get here, thus foiling the H-Bombers' plans for the third and final time. Returning to the Bugle, Peter is tasked with photographing some lizard people spotted in Central Park. After arriving there and taking the pictures, Spider-Man defeats the lizards and saves some civilians they were trying to capture. Peter then returns to the Bugle and gives Jameson and Robbie the pictures, much to their delight. Later that night, Peter takes Mary Jane Watson, his girlfriend, for a thrill ride, stopping in Central Park for a talk about Harry, who blames Peter for his father's death, Norman Osborne. Mary Jane comforts Peter by saying it wasn't his fault and he states that they will eventually work it out. Meanwhile, an alien symbiote inside a meteor crashes nearby and attaches itself to Peter's shoe, while Harry goes inside his father's secret goblin lair, where he dons a goblin armor and enters a chamber filled with the goblin formula gas, thus becoming the new goblin. After taking Mary Jane home, Peter is suddenly attacked by Harry, new goblin, who wants to avenge his father's death. The two go on a high-fly battle on Harry's glider around the city, until Peter eventually defeats Harry by tricking him into damaging his glider. However, Harry crashes into an alleyway and gets severely injured, so Peter takes the unconscious Harry to a local hospital, where he will be treated. After a tiring day of fighting crime, Peter returns home and falls asleep. The symbiote approaches him during his sleep and consumes all over his body, leading to a brand new jet black Spider-Man suit. This new symbiote suit increases Spider-Man's powers, but it also brings out his dark side. Spider-Man decides to test out the suit in a battle with some gang members and, after seeing how quickly it is tiring him, he changes back to his regular red and blue suit and decides to use the black one only when he really needs it. The following day, Spider-Man heads to the Daily Bugle, only to find it under attack by the H-Bombers. Spider-Man defuses their bombs and discovers that Luke Carlyle, one of the richest bussinessmen in New York, is the Mad Bomber. 
The H bombers kidnap Jameson and run away with him in their helicopter, causing Spider Man to chase them. He manages to rescue Jameson and then takes him to safety on a rooftop, before engaging Carlisle and his men in a fight, eventually defeating them and destroying their helicopter, thus ending the threat of the H bombers once and for all. Later that night, Spider Man investigates the lab of Dr. Kurt Connors, his college science teacher, who has been reported missing for the past few days. He picks up a video camera and discovers that Connors was making experiments on himself with a lizard DNA serum that should have grown his right arm back. However, the experiment went too far and Connors ended up becoming a giant lizard. Spider-Man is then suddenly attacked by Connors, who runs away, but Spidey gives chase, stopping the mayhem he causes around the city and eventually cornering him in alley. Connors escapes by going into the sewers, but Spider-Man continues the search. As he dwells deeper into the sewers trying to find Connors, Spider-Man encounters many other lizard people infected by Connors, as well as Craven the Hunter, who is hunting Connors and is killing any lizard in his way. To make sure that Spider-Man doesn't stop his hunt, Craven activates a death trap to kill him, but Spidey survives and eventually finds Connors lair, where he plans to release the lizard people into the city, but Spider-Man defeats him. However, Connors and his lizards escapes deeper into the sewers and Spidey is forced to return to the surface. Here, Spider-Man helps the NYPD crack down on the Dragon Tail Gang in exchange for more information on the whereabouts of Craven and Connors. Successful in his mission, Spider-Man returns to the sewers and finds Connors, who has defeated Craven and prepares to turn him into a lizard. Spider-Man stops him, but in the process Craven wakes up and stabs the lizard, who turns back to Connors. Upset at this, Craven turns his attention to Spider-Man instead and the two start fighting, while Connors runs away. After defeating and trapping Craven until the police's arrival, Spider-Man finds Connors inside a generator room, where he has injected himself with a much stronger serum and transforms into a giant lizard. Spider-Man manages to defeat the lizard, turning it back to Connors once and for all, but he does this in such a violent manner that he realizes that the black suit may have a negative impact on him. After leaving Connors at a hospital, Spider-Man takes care of all the remaining lizard people around the city. He then comes to visit a fully recovered Connors at his lab, who agrees to help him analyze a piece of the symbiote, in exchange for having saved his life. Some time later, Peter returns to the Daily Bugle, where Jameson gives him a new assignment: go to the Empire State University campus and photograph a vampire rumored to be attacking the people in the area. That night, Spider-Man arrives at the ESU and is attacked by the vampire, but manages to take a picture of him for Jameson. The following night, Spider-Man goes to Connor's lab to analyze the symbiote for himself. After hours pass with no results, Spider-Man pushes off Mary Jane on the phone out of frustration and later hears some screams outside, indicating the vampire's return. Still frustrated and under the symbiote's influence, Spider-Man fights the vampire and eventually defeats him after he is weakened by the sunrise. Spidey takes him to Connors, who reveals the vampire to be Dr. Michael Morbius, a worldwide renowned biochemist. Morbius tells them that his wife Shriek is responsible for his transformation, so Spider-Man goes to confront Shriek, who is the leader of the Waste Tribe, one of the many gangs terrorizing the city. While Spider-Man fights her goons, Shriek prepares to control the entire city using an obelisk with powers similar to those of his black suit. Spidey thwarts Shriek's plan and destroys the obelisk, which also weakens Shriek, so she escapes and goes into hiding, until her powers would fully recover. Spider-Man returns to Connors's lab to see how Morbius is doing, only to find him dying. He pleads Connors to take him to see his wife, to which Connors and Spider-Man agree to do. Out on the streets, Spider-Man fights numerous Waste Tribe members in order to learn more about Shriek's whereabouts, eventually finding out the location of her hideout. Spider-Man takes Morbius to Shriek's hideout, where Shriek is very concerned to see Morbius like this and reveals that she is responsible for the accident that transformed him into a vampire, although she never wanted to harm him. Thus, she restores Morbius' strength, but also turns him against Spider-Man, the only one standing in their way to peace and happiness. Spidey defeats Morbius by exposing him to the sunlight and then confronts Shriek, who uses psychological tricks and illusions of Harry, Connors, Mary Jane, and Jameson to attack him. However, Spider-Man deduces that her powers come from the same element that forms his black suit, so he uses the symbiote to overcome Shriek's mind games and defeat her. A weakened Shriek uses her last powers to cure Morbius, turning him back to normal, but leaving her in a comatose state. 
Spider-Man leaves Shriek in Connor's care and, while Morbius remains with Connors to look after her, Spider-Man leaves, vowing not to allow the black suit to control him. The next day, Peter returns to the Bugle, where Jameson gives him and Eddie Brock the same assignment, expose Spider-Man as a menace, and the one who does it first gets a promotion. While Spider-Man scares some civilians and then takes photos of them, a police officer informs him that another Spider-Man is mugging someone across town. Spider-Man goes to confront the imposter, who is revealed to be none other than Brock. Back at the Bugle, Peter gets the promotion while Brock is fired for his actions. Before leaving however, he swears vengeance against both Peter and Spider-Man. Later that day, Peter overhears a conversation between two police officers who plan to issue a manhunt for Spider-Man over his actions, so he decides not to wear the black suit for a little while, until things simmer down. Meanwhile, an escaped convict named Flint Marco, who gained superpowers after accidentally being fused with sand, robs a nearby armored van. Spider-Man chases him into the subway and fights him, eventually seeing that he is no match for Sandman's powers, so he reluctantly changes into the black suit, with which he easily defeats Sandman. However, the symbiote overwhelms Spider-Man once again and he violently bursts open a water pipe which washes Sandman away, seemingly killing him. Under the symbiote's influence, Peter has a horrible date with Mary Jane and, after giving her an even more horrible thrill ride back home, the two argue. After Peter gets extremely violent, Mary Jane decides to break off the relationship, which saddens Peter. Realizing that the symbiote is controlling him more than he could have imagined, Peter retreats to the bell tower of a nearby church, where the vibrations of the bell allow Peter to remove the symbiote and its bond with him. However, Brock secretly followed him here and watched Peter unmask himself, before the symbiote attaches to him instead, turning Brock into venom. Venom finds a still-alive Sandman and blackmails him into helping him kill Spider-Man, otherwise he would kill his daughter Penny. The two capture Mary Jane and keep her hostage at a construction site, in order to lure Spider-Man. Peter returns to his apartment, where he sees the news and suits up as Spider-Man, arriving at the construction site to save Mary Jane. At the same time, Harry wakes up from his coma and sees the news as well, so he suits up as the new Goblin and heads over to help his friends. Arriving at the construction site, Spider-Man prepares to save Mary Jane, but Venom orders Sandman to kill him. Spider-Man defeats Sandman just as Harry arrives and helps him fight Venom for a while, before going to rescue Mary Jane. Spider-Man fights Venom long enough for Harry to rescue Mary Jane and take her to safety. Harry also rescues Penny while Venom, seeing that Sandman's daughter is safe, lies to Sandman about her death, which infuriates him. Now gigantic, Sandman attempts to kill Spider-Man and Harry, but the latter distracts Sandman whilst Spidey throws explosive barrels at him. As Harry activates a pumpkin bomb to finish off Sandman, Venom pulls Harry into the Sandman. The bomb explodes, killing Harry and defeating Sandman. Now one-on-one, -on -one, Spider-Man and Venom engage in a violent final fight. Spidey gains the upper hand by using sonic vibrations to weaken the symbiote and defeats Venom. Brock loses control of the symbiote, which slithers away while Brock seemingly dies. Peter and Mary Jane reconcile and resume their relationship and Sandman is reunited with his daughter. He thanks and apologizes to Spider-Man, before leaving. The game ends with Peter narrating the next day and stating the only way to honor and remember the people he loves the most is to never stop being Spider-Man. Game Boy Advance As Spider-Man swings through the air, he spots a building on fire. He enters it and defuses a bomb which has been planted there. He then finds New Goblin flying around, and defeats him, knowing that it is his friend, Harry Osborn. He then retreats to save civilians who are trapped in a building. After rescuing them, he is encountered by Sandman. Knowing that he cannot defeat Sandman, he flees to his home, where the alien symbiote takes over his body. Peter wakes up with the black suit, and uses it to his advantage. He then finds that Electro has kidnapped the senator, and Mad Bomber has planted explosives throughout the city. After foiling their plans, and defeating them, he swings off to find Sandman, and gives chase. He then defeats Flint by opening a door which releases a large amount of water onto him. Spider-Man, thinking he killed Flint, tries to get the black suit off him, knowing that its influence is corrupting his mind. The black suit then is removed when sound waves drive it off, onto Eddie Brock, who desires revenge on Peter and Spider-Man, and gives himself the name, Venom. 
Spider-Man then finds that Sandman is still alive and well, and now has quicksand powers at his usage. He is then defeated once again by Peter. Venom then comes, and battles Spidey, but is defeated when dropped from the building. Spider-Man proceeds to call for medical attention, and the symbiote escapes into the night, with the screenshot saying, The end? <laughs> Gameplay Microsoft Windows, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 The most conspicuous difference in these versions is where you cannot alternate between suits at will, similar to how the Prince cannot control his transformation into the Dark Prince in the Ubisoft title Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones. Instead, you alternate between suits as you progress through the story. The upgrade system is different compared to earlier titles as well. Upgrades will be unlocked only as you progress and cannot be purchased. Collectibles can be found in the form of tokens, which are scattered everywhere throughout the city, from skyscrapers to the subway tunnels. Once you have completed all the story missions, you are given a new game plus option. This will allow you to replay all the story missions in the black suit only. You can switch between suits via the pause menu. Spider-Man 3 is the first Spider-Man title to introduce quick time events, a mechanic where you have to follow the corresponding controls on screen to progress. Like many other PC games, the PC version can be modified, although very few mods for this game have been produced. Scorpion, Rhino, and Kingpin are exclusive villains to this version. The player is also granted temporary access to play as New Goblin during the final mission in the game in a boss fight against Sandman, until he became a full playable character exclusive to PlayStation 3's Collector's Edition of the game, then as downloadable content for both PlayStation Network and Xbox Live. In the PC version's modifications, New Goblin's free roam gameplay is similar to his PlayStation Network, Xbox Live's downloadable content counterpart, such as having no story missions, except it has no challenge missions. Outside PC modifications, in all three versions, Peter Parker is also playable through a glitch, but some of your abilities are lost due to some of the glitch's bugs. However, you can overcome these bugs if you complete a certain side mission. Topic PlayStation 2, Wii and PlayStation Portable The versions developed by Vicarious Visions differ from the versions developed by Treyarch. Most notably the recycled cutscenes and similar story missions, as well as the open world hub and challenges. In the PlayStation 2 and Wii versions, the black suit can be put on at will and works similar to Hypermode in Metroid Prime 3, Corruption, although there is a cooldown period after using it, instead of a health cost. The black suit will enhance the player's attacks and health, but if the player uses it for too long, Spider-Man can be permanently corrupted by the black suit, leading to a non-standard game over. To free Spider-Man from the black suit, the player must perform a series of quick-time events to turn him back to normal. Much like Spider-Man 2, you have an upgrade system, where you can purchase unlocked upgrades as you progress. Upgrades are purchased with hero points. You earn these points by completing the main story missions, or the side missions. The black suit cannot be upgraded. Like other Spider-Man titles, there are side missions that can appear at random. These missions can range from muggings to delivering items such as fruit pies. The side missions however are activated through a radio transmission which gives you the option of doing said mission or not. This has never been done in any Spider-Man game before. Much like the next-gen versions, there is a crime wave mechanic, where on the overhead map displays the gangs throughout the city. To lower the crime wave, you must complete combat tours where you have to complete tasks similar to the side missions of the game. As you progress the combat tours the gangs will lose control, giving the NYPD an advantage. If however, you ignore the combat tours the gangs will take over more parts of the city as well as other gangs. This will affect the open world hub with a new environmental mechanic. Similar to Spider-Man 2 and Ultimate Spider-Man, there are collectibles. The only collectibles you can find however, are the meteorites and spider emblems. These are scattered throughout the city. Spider emblems can only be found once you complete the story missions. Once you find them all you will unlock the black suit. The combat system is much more similar to Ultimate Spider-Man than Spider-Man 2, such as lacking of mid-air combos from Spider-Man 2. The primary features for the Wii version are motion controls. 
By flicking the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, the player can perform various actions such as combat, and one of Spider-Man's trademark abilities, web swinging. There are also certain minigames tailored to the motion controls. This can range from disarming a bomb, to completing quick-time events. The PlayStation Portable version is a full-on port of the PlayStation 2 version with an extra feature exclusive to the handheld known as Conquest Mode. Conquest Mode is an extra mode where the player has only a very limited amount of time to traverse the city and complete challenges such as combat tours, delivering items, and protecting civilians. The more challenges are completed, the more hero points the player earns. Once time has elapsed, the score is calculated and the most recent save is loaded, the mission can be replayed any time to get a higher score. Conquest mode can be exited with a visit to the Daily Bugle building in order to return to the main game. Conquest mode can be accessed via the title screen or scrapbook. Topic. Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS The Game Boy Advance version is a side-scrolling action game. While the characters are seen 2.5D, everything else is 2D. It exacts the storyline of the film. A map is used to enter levels. Bubbles during levels give hints. The Nintendo DS version and the Game Boy Advance version differ, but is side-scrolling and completely 2.5D. It uses the touch screen to execute most attacks. In this version, players can put on the black suit at will, and it can only help them. However, that suit will be disabled if Spider-Man's health is too low. This version supports wireless multiplayer. Topic. Special editions Special editions of the game were available to PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 owners. The PlayStation 3 Collector's Edition artwork shows the fully colored black costume of Spider-Man instead of a combination of both suits. Common features for the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 were an interview with Avi Arad, chief creative officer of Marvel Entertainment and founder of Marvel Studios, Spider-Man 3 movie webisodes, a behind-the-scenes featurette with the cast, and a collectible lenticular card with the movie's images. The PlayStation 3 Collector's Edition came with a pre-installed DLC which featured the ability to play as the New Goblin Note, he will only be unlockable after you defeat him in the game. The New Goblin DLC was later made available for download from Xbox Live and PlayStation Network users. Reception Spider-Man 3 was met with mixed to average reviews. Game Rankings and Metacritic gave it 63% and 68 out of 100 for the Game Boy Advance version, 78.17% and 79 out of 100 for the DS version, 62% and 53 out of 100 for the PlayStation 2 version, 53% and 60 out of 100 for the PC version, 66.24% and 63 out of 100 for the Xbox 360 version, 50.67% and 50 out of 100 for the Wii version. 63.03% and 62 out of 100 for the PlayStation 3 version, and 54.66% and 52 out of 100 for the PSP version. The key criticism for these versions is the game's similarity to its predecessor. The PlayStation 2, Wii, and PlayStation Portable versions have been criticized for a short story mode and disappointing graphics, with GamesRadar suggesting that they were technically inferior to the preceding game from 2004. The Wii version has however been praised for the use of the remote and nunchuck in its gameplay, which is considered to be the Wii version's strongest point. The Microsoft Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 versions, despite receiving only average reviews, have been universally better received than the PlayStation 2, Wii, and PlayStation Portable versions. The Wii version was given a D+, grade by The Wire. X-Play gave the Wii version 1 out of 5 the first Wii game to get 1 out of 5, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions 3 out of 5, and the DS version 4 out of 5, the game was also criticized for not being the same version on each system. Some criticism has surfaced due to having New Goblin only fully playable in the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. It was also criticized for having a lot of glitches. However, Game Informer liked the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of game, giving them an 8 out of 10. 
For the Nintendo DS version, GameSpot praised the number of moves, Tobey Maguire's voice acting, and the variety of missions, but criticized the soundtrack. ScrewAttack named the Wii version of the game the seventh worst superhero game. <laughs> Notes <laughs>